Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome back to our character creation series in part nine, the final part of our series here. We are going to look at adding a little bit of texture attributes to our character here. As you can see, we added some hair, not the greatest hair in the world, but kind of gives you an idea. We uh, fix the eyes so that they look a lot better. Actually, they're not glinting like they should here. And I think that's probably because I turned off my other layer with all my, actually, yeah, I did. I turned off that layer with the panel on it, which is right here. You may remember I took that panel right there and I put it over on that layer and I turned it off when I did that render. Anyway, uh, let's move forward in doing some texturing, some texturing fun. Um, I am doing my textures in Photoshop. I uh, sometimes use GIMP, but I I don't know. I guess I've used Photoshop too long because when I try to use GIMP, I get very frustrated. Uh, things just don't work the way I think that they should. Uh, I know GIMP is a very good program. It's very robust and it's free, which is good. But in my case, I'm going to be using Photoshop here. Okay, so... What you want to do is go find the texture for your character here. In my case, uh, it is the middle-aged light-skinned male diffuse texture, texture that's in the documents under Make Human and under your Exports folder and under your Texture folder. What I also did is I went out to the internet and I searched for male face uh, front and I got this, and what I was looking for is eyebrows. That's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing here to change my character around a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select just this part of the face here so I can line things up and do a Control C copy. Go to my texture here. I'm going to do a new layer and Control V, paste this in here. And I'm going to grab this handle and I'm going to hold down shift and just rotate this so that it fits our texture here. And I'm gonna move it over and hold down the shift key and I'm going to scale it down, move it into place. And I need to zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. And what I normally do here is I just come over to the opacity and I move this down so I can kind of see both layers at once. This way I can kind of line it up and make sure that things are lined up the way they should be. So I can see that I need to make this maybe a little bit smaller. Kind of hard to see, but if you mess around with it, you can kind of get the idea. And what I do is I don't put the eyes like right over the eyes because of the way the texture works. I and wanting to get the eyebrows here. So I'm gonna put them a little bit closer to the eyes than what I would normally. Otherwise your eyebrows tend to kind of get stretched uh, around. And I might even like scale this down some more. Okay. Maybe, I don't know, those are pretty big eyebrows. So we'll see how it works. Um, in some cases, you may want to say, well, I want to get the lips of a person or the nose. Uh, it doesn't usually work out very well because of the way the texture is spread across the face. Um, normally you can't get a normal face, photo face, and put it on the texture and have it, expect it to work very well. You can see how the, you know, the face itself is kind of spread out and it just, it doesn't work very well. But it does work usually somewhat well for the eyebrows, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to hit enter to apply um, the way I've scaled this texture around. And now what I can do is I can kind of like um, turn the opacity back up. And what you want to do is you want to get your, your uh, texture to match the texture that is on your, um, comes with your make human character. So... In my case, I'm going to, oh, uh, why is my stuff screwed up here? Okay, because I'm recording at um, this large size, it kind of is moving my windows together, but what I want is my adjustments layer. And I want 
this layer here, which is hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to click on that. And what that will allow me to do is, well, if I change it, you can see it's changing the whole thing, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to select this little thing right here, which is means that it's just going to affect the layer below it only. So I'm going to select that. And now I'm going to kind of play around with it. So I'm going to match my background layer as best I can. So somewhere in there, I'm going to look at the saturation, kind of get that kind of where I need it. Maybe right there. And if you need to play around with the lightness as well, you can do that. So you can kind of play around with those settings. In some cases, um, I mean, this image is actually pretty close. It's not bad, but in some cases it's way off. So I really have to play around with this stuff. So I'll go back to my layers and I want to go to my layer right here with the eyebrows and I'm going to grab my eraser and I'm just going to start kind of erasing some of this stuff. And see how that's blending in. That's really not a bad blend right there. Okay, so I don't need the nose or anything, and I don't need his eyes. Really, I'm just looking for the eyebrows. So I can change the size on my eraser. And by the way, if I ever forget, uh, I had a really terrible time trying to record Photoshop using the recording, the Camtasia recording that I'm using. The reason that happens is because I need to run Photoshop with admin rights for whatever reason, and then it will work magically. Uh, so kind of a reminder to myself. Okay, so now I have eyebrows. Now if I want to, I can go back and I can bump this all the way up. The opacity so as you know, his eyebrows are really, really dark there if I want to. Okay, another thing that you can do here if you want to is do the exact same thing I did. Go grab some image. Again, make sure that it's an image that you're not infringing copyright on. Um, and you want to say, say if I wanted to add like wrinkles or something to this guy, I could go get a wrinkly guide image, a guy image, and I could kind of add some of the wrinkles in. Now you can use the old man or woman texture in order to do that. But if you wanted to get something more specific, I mean, just feel free to go around and play with adding different layers to your texture. Uh, another thing that I've done in the past is I would create a layer and say, remember I said at one time that I like to use this basic short hair that comes with this. Um, what you can do is I'm gonna grab a brush, make it really big. Um, and I'm using just the, like the soft round brush and come over here and make sure it's white. And why is it not painting? Okay, not painting because I don't have it in the right layer here. So you can take a white brush or you can take, you can make it kind of grayish if you want, uh, up to you. But you can kind of go over the hair. You know, I'm doing a really terrible quick job here but you can go over the hair and then you can go to your opacity and you can kind of bring this down and see how that kind of gives it kind of a grayish color there that's just a, a really easy way to kind of give a character some gray hair instead of this kind of um, brownish red reddish brown hair so anyway what i'm really after here is these eyebrows so what i'm going to do is I'm not going to mess up my original texture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose File, Save As, and make it a PNG file. And I'm going just to change it to Tutorial Test Guy uh, Skin. And save that. So once that's done, go back to Blender. And you want to select his skin. Go to Materials. 
make sure you select his skin material. And by default, remember it's the middle age light skin. So I can open up an image and go to the tutorial test guy skin that I just created. And hopefully that'll give us some eyebrows here. So let's do another test render. Control S quick save, F12. Render away here. And there we are. There's Crewman Jones with his amazing eyebrows. Now, as you can see, I've actually put them a little bit too low. So the nice thing about using Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, you can save your raw file and go back and use, you know, manipulate your layers. Often what I do is I will keep those files, save those files. So just for this purpose, if I decide I want to change something, I can go back and move that eyebrow layer a little higher or whatever I want to do there. But as you can see now, our character is starting to get some kind of personality to him. You know, he's got eyebrows, he's got hair, he's got his nice shining eyes, he's ready to go, he's he's Crewman Jones, he's like, Captain, I'm stuck in the shuttle bay and somebody's opened the shuttle bay and all the oxygen is escaping, I don't know what to do, or whatever. And <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, this is Crewman Jones. He's our test tutorial guy, tutorial test guy. So one thing we didn't do is we didn't really do a pose here. So maybe we want to do that real quick. Um, let's see, go into pose mode, grab here, and I'll probably end up kind of ripping his uniform again a little bit here. But maybe he's like, pointing or saying, hey, what are you doing? Or I'm going to shake your hand or something like that or talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe bring that down. Yeah, it's not really doing what I wanted to do. Let's move it in like that. Okay, I am Crewman Jones and I am telling you, I am telling you, you shouldn't be doing that. Something like that. Okay, just a very basic pose here. Maybe he's off kilter. I don't know. Okay, so go to the camera and uh, let's do something like uh, select my camera. Let's change the aspect ratio of the camera here to 720 by 1280 and GZZ so we can move out a little bit maybe something like that and backgrounds this background is definitely not very important, but yeah, we'll put it like that. Control S quick save, shift B so I can get the entire frame in here. Shift Z to do a render here just to see what it's looking like. Okay, the camera's a little bit off. Grab that and bring it over. So he's like, hello, I'm Kroman Jones in some weird fake accent. Okay, control S quick save and do another F12 render. All right, so there he is, Crewman Jones. He's saying, hello, I'm Crewman Jones. Who are you? And I really screwed up his shoulder back when I was messing around with those controllers there. But anyway, so we started out with the very first uh, tutorial in setting up our tools for Make Human in Blender. We went through uh, creating clothes, exporting from Make Human, importing into Blender, setting up our inverse schematics bones uh, so you can move your character around, setting up the eyes so that they look halfway decent. Look at his eyes, they are shining. Yes, my eyes are shining just like almost like a normal person. And, and then we, uh, Played around with the lighting a little bit, so it'll look a little bit better. Gave him a little bit of shadow here. 
and also grew him some hair right out of blender, which is great. If you use the uh, hair in Make Human, that's fine. Um, there is a little bit of, um, sometimes you get a little bit of a problem with using the hair from Make Human when you're doing the MHX setup. If you do and you would want a tutorial on that to fix that, uh, it's really a very simple fix that took me hours to figure out how to do. Well, maybe not hours, but it took me a little, little bit of time to figure out. But uh, also we went into Photoshop in this tutorial and we actually gave him some eyebrows to give him a little bit of a personality. So very cool. I mean, make human being a free program like it is, you can come up with characters that look absolutely amazing and unique. You would think with like, you know, the, the options that you have in make human that maybe uh, you'll create like a generic character that will look like everything else that you create. But because of all those options that you can change around and make human and then go in into your texture in this way and even add more attributes plus the hair and all that stuff and in the eyes, of course, you can actually come up with a very, you know, very unique character. You can create just about any kind of human that you want to. Um, just a really, really cool program. And when with the MHX2 plugin, just kind of knocked it out of the park. And there's so many other options there that I did not even cover. I mean, just wanted to give you the basics so you can, you'll be able to create your character and uh, give them clothes and all that and know what the process is to do that. But yeah, there's a lot of other things that if you dig in, you know, look at Thomas's site that where we got those, uh, got the actual MHX2 plugin, uh, a lot of good information there. And again, I can't thank uh, V Scorpion C enough for her set of tutorials. She did really just an excellent job on those. And like I said, if you want to dig even deeper with more detail, go check out her tutorials on Make Human. Just uh, really, really, really nice tutorials. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this series on character creation. This has been Dan Nobles at Blender for Noobs. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.